Megan. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to the Spicy Brain Podcast brought to you by Spicy Brain Studios. We are going to talk today about all things neurodivergent, neurospicy, and really focusing in this week on ADHD and a book called Driven to Distraction. So I usually bring up some kind of a topic, right? And we then like, we like dig into that brain of yours. Yes. And then we like look at strategies and then we try to invite our community to help us with those strategies as well. So let's get started right away. I want to talk about something fascinating. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. I'm just going to bring up a name. Okay. Okay. Mr. Pasta. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Pasta. Oh. Is that a good memory? Yes. Is that good memory? He's the best. He was. Okay. Oh. So I, I'm going to have you talk a little more about Mr. Pasta and, and what he meant to you. But um, our focus today is going to be on impulsivity, okay? So one of the things from Driven to Distraction is that, um, from Driven to Distraction, boy, it's hard for me to say sometimes. Anyway, uh, one of the, the symptoms or the things that they talk about is that impulsivity, either verbal or emotional, changing plans, spending money impulsively, these types of things are mm-hmm. sort of the, the the topic for today, okay? So we'll come back to that. but. Can you just walk us through who Mr. Pasta is and who, what he meant to you a little bit and where you met Mr. Pasta? Uh, Mr. Pasta is a phenomenal human mm-hmm. who lives in California. Mm-hmm. I was just moved to LA to like, you know, become a young starlet and yes. start my career. Yes. And I was working at the Apple store in Santa Monica and he worked there too. And His last name, I think, either like sounds like a pasta or it is a pasta. (laughs) I'm not quite sure. We always have like these big like store meetings and he would always bring pasta to the store meetings because he's from Mm. I'm well, I'm not gonna say where he's from because I I wanna say Boston, but it could be I don't know. I'm oh I shouldn't say. But he had this like great he's like Mr. Pasta. He's like, Yeah, I'm gonna talk to you. He's like, Yeah, it's great. We're Mr. Pasta. (laughs) And he just was he's just like this ball of energy, amazing human being. And, um, I was looking, I was needing a place to live because my, my thing fell through. And so he's like, well, I have a a room. He had a room in, uh, Hermosa beach and beautiful, such a beautiful area. Oh my God. Yeah. Incredible area. It still is, but it was incredible that you got to live there. Yeah. Like literally across the street from a gym, and then you walk down mm. the board, the bo- like down the main sh- street, and you're at the beach. I mean, it was just, mm. and you could see the beach, like a little bit of the water from where yeah. he lived. And it was literally one of the best places I ever lived in my life. Like he and mm. I just kind of got each other. You know, we didn't, it, it, there wasn't like this need to be, you know, best buddies, which is great. Like you just sort of can kind of do your own thing. Um, very respectful of each other. I, I I loved living there. Like I feel like I was my best self in LA when I was living with Mr. Pasta and yeah. just uh, an incredibly generous human being. Yeah. I, I can't say enough things about Mr. Pasta. I loved him. Yeah. I remember going to visit you there and he was very strict. Oh, so he, yes. it was his house and you were going to do things his way, but that actually helped your ADHD brain. I think having that much structure, like I'm not allowed to leave these things out. I have to put this away every time. Yep. And that I think actually provided a lot of structure for you. I just remember, you know, being so happy you were there and it was hard. It was a hard life in LA. Yeah. Um. So there was a lot of things that, you know, you drove like two hours a day to get to work oftentimes, even yep. if you were close. Um, by and you know it was just a tough tough thing and and having to go to auditions and being you know rejected and you know you were so I mean th- I think him, living there you were able to be so much more resilient than you would have been had you not um, yeah he he I grounded think. me and and mm-hmm. Hermosa Beach at least at the time is just a really laid back it felt like a kind of a New York neighborhood where you could walk places and it just it was such a down to earth place. So fast forward, you live there about a year or so, I think. Yeah, like a year and a half, I think. Yeah. And like, so there's just this laid backness, everything's chill, everything's good. 
And then what happens? Then he tells me that he's thinking about, I can't remember if he was like going to sell the house or mm-hmm. rent it out, rent it or out. something like he, yeah, there was, he needed to have some sort of a change, but he basically tells me that I'm going to have to probably move out in May. And I think he tells me that's like a little bit before Christmas. Yeah. So I have, that's a lot of time. That's a lot good. Of time, right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of time yeah. is great. A ton of time. Yeah. I internally panic because I've, I didn't realize how much I love this space at the time, but like I internally mm. panic and I immediately go to work the next day and there's a new girl there and we just, I was like, she needs a place to stay. And then I'm like, I need a place to stay. And I hadn't met her before. I hadn't really talked to her. And I was like, let's just move in together. Wow. Yeah. Like the next day. I think it was like, Either the next day or like within that week. So you've lived with Mr. Pasta for a year and a half. He tells you in six months or more, I might be selling. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And you might need a new place to live. Yeah. And like within days, you connect with this new person at work. Yes. Okay. Let's dig into that just for a minute, shall we? <laughs> let's, get, let's, get, let's get in there. Let's just Because do I it. never would have associated this specifically with ADHD. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have either. You know what I mean? Like, I guess it makes sense now that we're saying it. And I remember you having that moment and you having that panic. And I just knew you. So I wasn't like, oh, this is part of a diagnosis or something that I need to be telling her to slow down or anything. I was just like, oh, that's Megan. Yeah. It's going to be like, she's going to figure the next thing out. So now that I'm like being curious about it. Yeah. Can we like go back and think like, what was going through your brain at that time? Like, do you remember like what you were feeling or what you were, I know you said panic, but like, Do you remember your thoughts even or what you might have thought at that time? I don't know if I was actually thinking. I think that's the problem. Mm. I was feeling Mm. and I was just on autopilot from feelings. I was interesting. Like it, it felt so awful to think about not living with him anymore. And Mm. I didn't want to live in that awfulness for six months. You just were like, this is just going to continue. I'm never going to feel differently than I do right now. This is going to continue on and it's going to be too, too, too difficult. Yes. Wow. And, and, and that- you weren't like in a romantic relate. Like, let's be clear about this too, because yeah. you were not in love with Mr. Pasta. I mean, you loved him, I yeah. think, you know, and do care about him, but this wasn't romantic in any way. It was just no. a very stable human that brought you a lot of stability and a lot of comfort, I think, in that stability. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it was, it just felt right living with him. Mm. It just felt like, you know, I I felt safe. I felt comfortable. um, Mm. I felt respected. And, and I just, like, whenever I think about that home, I feel like a warm hug. You know, Mm. it just, it just felt cared for in a really tough city and it was like probably the closest thing to home that I had there Mm. and so the idea that like that home could no longer be was really overwhelming and terrifying to me Hmm. and I didn't I also like I think I what I do remember actually is that I thought, okay, well, there's going to come this point where I have to leave. So I better figure it out quickly because it's going to come and it's, it's, it's right there. And I mm. need to go and figure this out. And this idea of time, you know, you, you having less sort of like understanding of time in a way, right. Yeah. And people without ADHD, like it, something that's six months and something that's six minutes can be deceiving. Yeah, I think so. Like it, it felt like I had to take care of it right then and there because I was never going to feel better about it. I was never going to like feel comfortable. I was just, it was going to be a terrible six months. And if I just ripped the bandaid off now, it would be fine. It'd be, it'd be a lot better. 
mm-hmm. than waiting for six months and not having anything like, I don't know. I just, I was like, well, there's an opportunity. I better go. Cause I, I may not get that opportunity again. And I just got to go and take it. And you know, it, it must be, it must be meant to be because this girl's new. She needs a space. I need a space. Okay. I'm curious, you know, with this concept of like impulsivity, since that's what we're talking about, I know you've had other times when you can, I think, relate to the concept of impulsivity. And I, I was just wondering, like, do you, do you, you know, the things that they were talking about, like impulsivity with money or buying things or impulsivity with um, changing plans or whatever it is, is that, it, it does that feel similar to the Mr. Pasta piece? And yeah, can you, yeah. Can you talk us through like maybe something that came to mind when I said that? the impulsivity you know the this it was a completely impulsive irrational move i went from this incredibly stable situation to living in a situation where i you know her and i just should not have lived together cuz we just you know yeah. she's a lovely human being talented and creative and just phenomenal we just did not work as roommates at all yeah yeah and um I went, so I went from this really stable environment to like just a really unstable. And it was probably one of the worst decisions that I made personally, because I just didn't spend any time. I got too wrapped up in all of the emotions. And it kind of reminds me of what we were talking about last week, where we discussed ADHD people look for emotion, like they work off of emotion, Mm -hmm. right? So if you forget your key, Mm -hmm. your keys, you're waiting for that that feeling to like help you find it. And I feel like that's what happened. That emotions can be kind of help to organize you in a way. Yeah. And yeah. I, I I felt dysregulated when Mr. Pasta told me that mm-hmm. I wasn't going to be able to live there. And I think a normal human probably would have been like, okay, well, I'll just wait and sort of see. And honestly, <laughs> like I could have because I don't think he ended up yeah, I don't think he I, I think he was going to do the whole Airbnb thing before it was like really a big deal. Mm. And I don't think mm-hmm. he ended up doing it for like another year. So like I could have been living with him for a whole other year. But yeah. this impulsivity, this like need to this this feeling of like, OK, now I have to I have to act because I feel this now that just took over and led me down a path that I really like there were some good things about where I lived. I mean, not, you know, you were closer, right? And closer to work. To work and and I, yeah. I closer to some really good friends. Like I have a great friend named Shemaine from it and I still talk to her and I just love her to death. So like I was closer to her. Um, mm-hmm. I probably wanted to live with her, honestly, <laughs> but like yeah. she was living with our, our good friend Ray and, you know, so that was, it wasn't something that I could and so I, I I really wanted her life. I wanted to like live what she was living. And, mm. and I, you know, I just picked like her, like my roommate and I, we just, we just it was not a, a good, as I remember it, it was not a good, it not was a good not match. good. It was, yeah. Not no, a good we, we both, we both drove each other crazy. Like, so I, I know I did tons of stuff that like <laughs> just drove her crazy too. So sure. So like when we dig into the impulsivity piece of it though, you saying like, okay, there's so much emotion going on and I want that emotion to stop. So the emotion was what though? Like what might have been the emotion? I mean, I think sadness. I didn't Mm. fully understand it at the time that that was sadness. Um, it, Mm. It just felt heavy. Like I felt this actually like I was I was gonna say like from my lung I was like kind of thinking of my lungs but actually it felt heavy in my brain like my brain felt like Mm. it was just being dragged down and it Mm. was being weighted down with all of this and Hmm. I couldn't think I couldn't you know sleep well I I was just in I, I mean I was in sheer panic mode of like I gotta figure this out and I didn't know to like, I wouldn't have known to talk it through with anybody. I didn't, mm-hmm. I just, I just was feeling, I think every emotion of like all of the gratefulness and all of the sadness and all of, like, I was just feeling every single emotion possible and the, the, like the concern for myself and like the confusion. And I felt it all at the same time. And it just, 
it felt like too much. Hmm. Like you were going to kind of go down with the ship if you didn't get out. Interesting. Yeah. Is that the same as like, I know you've talked about sort of impulsive spending at times. Is that similar or is that different? Like, is there different reasons why you're impulsive or do they tend to be around emotion? I know anytime I, I don't do a ton of impulsive buying, but when mm-hmm. I, but like, I think the times that are, that are impulsive in the sense of like, I'm not thinking through it is when I'm trying to fix myself and like my ADHD brain. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I think like if I throw money at it, then I will, it'll make it better. And so maybe mm-hmm. it's like this organizational thing or it's this calendar or the, you know, like I've, I've, I've made a lot of purchases that way that are impulsive. And I, that was one of the things, you know, like this week I've tried this new ADHD revolution uh, mm-hmm. group. And I thought, Oh my God, it's just another thing I'm throwing my money at. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. but I really did think through it a lot more than I I've been thinking about this group for almost six months now. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I purposely hadn't connected with them because I was like, this is just another cash grab and I'm, I'm just going to be throwing my money away. Um, And so it wasn't until like you and I have been talking a lot about like what I need and like how I feel like I can be more successful that it all started to align. I'm like, okay, well, what they're saying makes more sense. And I, so I'm, I, I made this one less about impulsivity. Whereas like, you know, I, I really wanted, like there was, there's this woman, her name is Erin Condren. Condren, I think is where, yeah, something like that. And she makes these beautiful just gorgeous calendars. Like she just, you know, they're Mm. spiral and they're journaling and like, they're just, (laughs) there's like rose gold, uh, spot, you know, that could, I mean, it just, they're so beautiful. And, and it just, I want to be that person. I want to be that person so badly. (laughs) I want to like, I want to use like washi tape and I want to use stencils. (laughs) And like, I want to be that. I like, I uh, would love it. You and love so it. I spent like $80 at one point on these calendars and I, yeah. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to like commit to it. It's going to, it's what's going to fix this ADHD brain brain. Yeah. And nope. <laughs> like, yeah. They were pretty to look at. Ugh, they were so pretty, pretty to look, look at. at. I yeah. did. And I looked at them and I was like, oh, sort of like so my you- shoes. Like yeah, I had one pair of heels <laughs> after and I just kept looking at them. I'm like, when, maybe one day I'll get back into those heels. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, uh, I can't believe people wore them every and still do wear them yeah. every day. It's amazing to me. So when you're thinking about fixing yourself, I mean, in a way, moving was trying to fix that ADHD brain, not necessarily consciously, but right. It was trying to get rid of this like emotion, which we know that people with ADHD tend to feel things deep more deeply or or proportion more proportionally sometimes I think than others yeah um and and so trying to get rid of an emotion or trying to help I'm I'm wondering too even with the organizational things you've bought is it is there like anxiety around not being organized so you're trying to buy this thing to kind of help soothe that in a way well I I think that last week's podcast really hit home on the emotional side of it. I don't mm. think you could really hear it in the actual podcast, but mm. I, um, for those who yeah. are listening right now, I was very emotional and I was crying to the point where I couldn't even do the end words. Like Michelle had to do them because I just yeah. couldn't, I, the, the, this emotion, like I, I feel this dysregulation. I feel that like my brain has been held I I'm being held hostage by my brain Mm -hmm. and that if I just could, you know, get out of this hostage situation, then I would be this happy person. I would be this, you know, beautiful goddess who makes calendars (laughs) and, (laughs) and like has this home that just, you know, is sparkles as you walk through it, you know, and just, (laughs) I would with all of the beautiful <laughs> chiffon and, you know, just <laughs> the fantasy life. And that, and I think, 
I think more than anything, when I think of those things, it just, it feels happy and it feels balanced. And mm. I would feel a certain way of, of airiness. I think that's what I'm wanting. I'm, you know, I, th- mm. these, these products don't actually make that. I just, I want to feel light and, and balanced. And so these, you know, the, I mean, marketing is phenomenal because it, it is selling to the emotion, not necessarily it's, yeah. it's trying to get you to feel a certain way. And that is the best marketing you can have. And so I, I, I just want that. Like, you know, when I, when I left Mr. Pasta's house, I just, I wanted to feel airy and happy. And I saw my friend Shemaine, I thought she looks airy and happy and I wanted what she had. And so there was a, there, there just yeah. happened to be a space that was right below her in their apartment. And so I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to like live that fantasy. I'm going to like live that life. It was such mm. a fantasy, life, you know, and I'm, I'm going to live that right. moment and feel this way. And it's just all going to finally come together. When in mm. fact I had, <laughs> you life. had it, I had it. And I think that's yeah. the thing is I had it. And then Mr. Poss was like, I'm going to do something different. And I was devastated. I was like, what do you mean? I don't know how to recreate you, Mr. Pasta. Like, I don't know how to recreate that situation. I'm never going to find it again. I stumbled into it. I, you know, and like, I think that's been the challenge for me is why, you know, talking about work is hard trying to find stuff because like, I've had these just amazing moments kind of, I've stumbled into like, you know, Mr. Mm -hmm. Pasta or, uh, my work with Joe Beals, you know, when I was doing mm-hmm. technical work, like I I've stumbled into these really great situations that work for your brain. Yeah. And yeah. I've never known how to create those situations. Yeah. And I think that that's like what I th- feel like this podcast is helping me learn. I'm not there mm-hmm. yet, Yeah, but trying to figure out how to create, I don't need to wait to stumble into something. I want to be able to create it myself. Mm. That's really powerful. And I, I mean, yeah, I mean, how do you create a world for yourself that fits with your brain? And I, and I'm, I'm curious, you know, what strategies you're finding might be working for you with that? Because I know that you know, one of the things I talked about with impulsivity was changing plans. And I think, you know, I can imagine a lot of reasons why somebody would change plans. I'm curious for you because I know sometimes things like, you know, you're, you're going to be volunteering right at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Congratulations. That's such like a big get and super exciting. Um, but one of the things you had to do was make it to that volunteer I, I don't know, I guess it was an interview, right? Almost yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. that interview. And you had to get there on time and there were lots and lots of people there. And I could have seen in the past that might've been something you would have just sort of like maybe quit, quit a little bit. Like you would yeah. have just changed your plans and not gone. Um, and, but you did go and, and you did get it. What might be some strategies you're using to, to kind of keep some of that impulsivity at bay now? Well, I think, The first thing is that the impulsivity is easier to keep at bay when it's something that I really enjoy Mm. and curating moments and experiences in my life that I enjoy. Mm. The the idea of working there, you know, we, we had gone to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and, Mm -hmm. you know, your beautiful son was like, we met this guy named Gordon and he was taught, I was, I just, I loved his, this guy's energy so much. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've loved marine biology my entire life, probably ever since Star Trek four, which was actually yeah. filmed at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Even oh though my gosh, you're show, a Trekkie. <laughs> I'm a Trekkie through and through, even though it's like they said it was San Fran, it was actually the Monterey Bay Aquarium, mind mm-hmm. you. And I've just always loved, I always loved the water. I've always loved the ocean. I've always felt really that's like been my safe space in therapy. I mean, it's, you know, I love it. Mm -hmm. And so when, when, you know, when Josh and I were there and he, we met Gordon and I just, 
I, I just instinctually was like, how do you work here, Gordon? Like, this is just such a great place. And he's like, well, actually, you can, you know, you can apply. You can volunteer. And yeah. Josh is like, you're going to be best friends with Gordon. <laughs> 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 and it turns out that Gordon is like one of the top volunteer people. Like he has a oh red gosh. jacket and he's like done over 25,000 hours of work. I mean, like some amazing and he always like little, he has all this flair mm. that tells about like how awesome he is. And, you know, so it, it just, I think that's the first part is that I, there were other opportunities that I could have gone towards, yeah. you know, like I had the opportunity to possibly be another milit like another key spouse again. And I was like, you know, I just, I did that in Tucson. That was really important in Tucson. But like the thing I really want to do is this, like, I just feel connected to it. And mm. so I think if I feel connected, it allows me to get excited and, work through that dopamine and say, okay, Megan, you got to be there on time. Like, okay. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay. Well, if it takes 15 minutes to get there, mm -hmm. then you need to give yourself double that time in case of traffic. Okay. Now it's 30 minutes. Okay. Then you need at least 15 minutes to park. Okay. And then you'd also need an extra 15 minutes to get lost. So you're going to leave an hour ahead. <laughs> You know, right. Easier. Right. And but you I, have motivation because you're listening to that intuitive part of you of what you actually enjoy and yeah. want to do. Yeah. And it provides me dopamine because I enjoy it. So while I'm, I, when I'm waiting, I don't mind waiting because I'm excited about like what's to come, but mm. it's something that it's drudgery for me. And I'm like, Ugh, now I got to yeah. go for two minutes. I got to, like, I know all the steps to get there on time, but then I have to wait 15 minutes just before the doors to open. I'm like this, I don't want to have to wait for this thing that I don't want to be doing. Right. So, but like you do have to do things you don't want to be doing still in life. Right. I mean, I don't know that you always want to do your dishes. Oh, so yeah. like, how are you kind of, uh, or what might you be finding helping you with the, and I sort of think of it almost like impulsivity to not do your dishes. Like, you oh, know, I wow. mean, it, there's an element of, of, of that, right. Where like, I'm, I'm making a plan. I'm going to do this thing. And now I'm just changing that because I'm, I don't feel it. I'm not yeah. feeling up to it. I don't want to do it or whatever it is. Right. Well, the current thing I'm working on this week is to set an appointment each day mm. and set the same appointment time. Okay. So this group that I joined with, they've learned over time that people with ADHD really need to have accountability mm -hmm. and they need structure. But you also have to be like, remember how we were talking at one point about 50 50? Yeah. And how there has to be like the, the, the person with ADHD has to also bring 50%. Yes. And then there's another 50% that comes in. So they're providing this really great 50%. They're providing the space and the resources and the people and all, you know, the structure I have to then. And this bring... is that ADHD revolution. Yeah. Um, group is, was that the name of it? Yeah. It's ADHD revolution, uh, focus okay. revolution, focus, focus revolution. revolution by ADHD vision, I think is the company ADHD vision. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a link to it. Um, okay. It is a paid service. So that's something to be aware of. Um, but they, I still have to bring my 50%. I still have to be there on time. If I'm more than a minute late, they will not let you in. Wow. So, so it's like a hard <laughs> start. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and showing then, up for yourself and for others. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cause that's the thing. It's like, we're all showing up together and I have to also bring my commitment. So I have to think a little mm -hmm. bit, like I don't have to commit to everything everywhere at all at once. I just have to think about what am I going to do in the next 50 minutes? Am I going to, mm -hmm. you know, what can I commit to? So like for my kitchen, I don't want to clean it. I've, I, that's like the one thing we've talked about this for 30, 35, episodes. I think it's 35 episodes now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm like, I hate my kitchen. <laughs> well, and we talk a lot about tomatoes. Like you're yeah. going to do two tomatoes, which is 25 minutes each. So that's like, you're kind of having to commit to what are your two tomatoes going to be for? 
Yeah. It, and so but you have support, you're getting something back, right? And that other 50% that you, you know, whether we call it body mirroring or uh, accountability buddy or, you know, yeah. right? That oh, it, idea. it is. It's, it's totally body mirroring on steroids. It's, um, yeah. it's, it's incredible because yeah, they're like, put your intention in there. And then the coach who is certified, I mean, they're, they're a psychologist or, cert, you know, they're in, they've mm-hmm. been certified on multiple levels. They will look and they actually read them out loud. So like you hear, mm-hmm. okay, so-and-so is committing to reading their finished, like, you know, 30 more minutes of reading their chapter or mm. this person's committed to another 40 minutes of writing. Mm. This person's going to be, you know, working on their their morning routine. Or the cool thing is that, like, it's actually multi-world country. It's international. That's the People right. from all over the world. Yeah. So <laughs> while I'm getting ready, <laughs> multi. <laughs> okay. So while I'm getting ready for for you know to like start my day someone says like oh i just i need help with my nighttime routine and i was like oh, wait wow. you can do that like you can wow. you can book a session to help with your nighttime routine they're like yeah you can book That's a amazing. session to like i booked a session to get up and just do my workout cuz i wanted wow. to i want to have an intention i listened to mel robbins and she says that mel robbins says that S- september is the time to start new like re- like your new year's resolutions basically like mm. September is like built into our DNA that like we have four months until the end of the year and you can do anything for four months. And mm. so it's built into our DNA to like go back to school, like to get like to start anew. And there's really not a lot that, that, that interrupts us. Cause like, it's not too cold yet. There's no like major holidays, you know, and, yeah. and you just have these three months to say, what do I want to do the next three months? So I was like, well, I want to, I want to work out. I'm going to get my body, you know, Mm -hmm. work every day. Yeah. And I would like to write more. So I just, I was like having a blob kind of a day. This is what I call it now, Michelle. I blob day. I I call it my blob day (laughs) where, you know, I've like hyper-focused the day before and then I've probably over hyper-focused and then I become a blob. You need a little break for your mm -hmm. Ferrari brain. For my Ferrari brain. What? <laughs> I need so I'm, I'm so excited to hear about this. I'm very curious like what other people in our community do because it sounds to me like two things you're really focusing on is doing things that you really enjoy and yeah. finding that joy in your life, but also asking for help. In, and this is a very specific way that you found is helpful but um, asking for help and having that accountability to make sure that the things you don't enjoy doing as much, you're not just like doing the quick quit. Yeah. And like you're breaking these larger tasks up into smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big thing is that you're breaking up these tasks and you're not saying I'm going to clean my kitchen. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work on a tomato of, dish it like cleaning like washing my dishes and I'm gonna work on a you know like you're just sort of creating these I'm gonna you know work on a tomato of clearing my counters or I'm gonna work on this one section of the counter like you're breaking it down into actionable chunks. You know it's interesting because we used to do that sort of instinctually when I was in Japan and you were in New York and yeah. we would get online and we would be each other's accountability buddies, right? And yeah. so I would be cleaning and you would be cleaning or you know, we would be um, crafting or doing something together, not always talking either. Sometimes we were listening to music or we were listening to a movie together, but we were always doing that. I like the anonymity of what you're talking about. Like you Mm. don't have to admit to anybody else in your life that you need this support and you don't have to, you can ask for support at three o'clock in the morning if that's when you need support. Yeah. I love that the way that you were describing it as well. 24 hour support is incredible. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I can use that. I mean, anyone can use it, but I think it's definitely like when you know you yourself can't, you know, I, I can sort of get myself going usually. Right. Mm. And you know that that's hard. So even signing up for this time and doing it the same time every day will be a challenge. Right. At this point. Yeah. Moment. Well, cause I mean, at this moment, like I, there are certain days that I haven't cause I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do that today. 
yeah. you know, cause I worked too hard the day before. So I think it's really about helping you find that balance mm-hmm. of how much can you do? How much is reasonable? How, you know, it's like, it's, it's like that first step. Like, can you just make a commitment to one thing? And the one thing yeah. is I'm going to commit to the same time each day. And so however that works for me, you know, it, it's whether it's through this focus revolution or if it's like, hey, with your buddy, like if I were to say to you, Michelle, I want to have a phone call with you every day mm-hmm. at 11, you know, if I, I'm going to book it with you just to like, just to, just to talk through it, you know, right. uh, however you do it, like whatever makes sense for your brain, just to make that one appointment for yourself mm-hmm. that you can't get out of. Yeah. That you don't, that you show up for yourself. Yeah. Right. But yeah. you can't do it. Like I couldn't do it alone. I shouldn't say you. Right. I, I couldn't do it alone. Yeah. I've heard people say this over and over again. They're like, just make an appointment with yourself. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Like myself is going <laughs> to forget that Myself may not show up. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Like, I'm not sure where she's going to be. So I, mean, I think maybe we need somebody else there too. And also it's so easy to be like, yeah, it's fine. My, my, my brain yeah. is like, it's like, whatever. And it's, it's, there was something to, like when I first thought about the idea of like, if you're a minute late, I'm like, well, this is the dumbest thing possible for a for like, you know, act, any people. But actually, it's brilliant because it's like, if I really want to do this, I will be on time. Yeah, I will figure it out. Yeah. And and I feel that like I feel like I, I get this like weird rush of dopamine where I'm like, <gasps> like you know, I'm trying to find the link. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's it's twelve four fifty eight. I have to sign up for my what? Like, where's the? Th-? And I feel this emotion and rush, and I'm like, I gotta get there, and mm. then I do it, and yeah. I'm dead there. Yeah, and again, that idea that emotions are what organize the ADHD person, right? That emotion of like stress or anxiety or whatever. I like that, do- that thing that's going to like kick your brain into gear. That's interesting. Yeah. And in a weird way, it's like when you and I, like when we have our meetings, yeah, like I should be on time because otherwise like I'm enabling myself to not mm-hmm. be, you know, like we think we're doing something good for my brain. Like we're like, okay, we'll just, she'll come whenever she's ready. And actually I think that we've been enabling me to not well, be no on time. problem. <laughs> I got you, kid. I, I like, can yell with. The, I was like, like I was yes. a high school teacher. Let me tell you. <laughs> you're like my. Students, I've been waiting. Students, just waiting for you to ask me to be that person for you. I can do that. <laughs> but then I also oh. know it's me asking for it, and like I'm yeah. saying, this is what I need, as opposed to like you know. Yeah. That, you you're know, in a different. Talking. You're in a different headspace to be able to, to want to expect that of yourself. Really, is what it is. Yeah, and so then, like, yeah. you're acting as my accountability partner. Sure. Yeah, I'm bringing Whereas, that other fifty percent, as opposed to like somebody just, you know, drill sergeant. You well, know, as you opposed to, to you, you've done this before for me, Michelle, mm-hmm. where you've tried to like bring. I, <laughs> This is a 50, 50% Michelle. Okay. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but you're like, I know, Megan, you're not saying any, you're not saying anything new. <laughs> this is, finally, you asked for it. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> no, but it's different. It's different for sure. Yeah. Well, for me to come to the idea of like, oh, I've been allowing myself to be enabled. Yeah. I think I needed that in the beginning. Like I needed that that because of my trauma, I think that's the part that's not mm-hmm. ADHD because of yeah. my trauma, I needed flexibility and I needed validation that if I was late, it was okay because of trauma. And that's mm. separate than the ADHD. So I think the ADHD part of me is like, Hey, I got to be on time yeah. and it's a hard start, hard start. But also maybe that's a thing that we can do is like, Hey, this appointment is a hard start, but like, maybe there's like other things where we're like, Hey, that I aren't I, a hard start. Right. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, just yeah. come, come as you are. Right. I like having the language around it. I'm very curious, like with our community, you know, if they have suggestions or thoughts about this as well, because I really think, um, you know, a bunch of the things like you're saying, like hard start terms like this can be very helpful to help 
navigate these kinds of things as well. And we found that like, oh, flap, you know, you use that term a lot, you and mom do when you're going to change direction. So I know yeah. verbally we are going somewhere else. Um, and I'm curious if other people in our community have found things like this being helpful for them. Like, mm. is a hard start helpful to them? Is, you know, is having language around these things something that they do with already sort of naturally or something that they've thought about as well? Um, this is a really exciting time, I think, because you're learning so much about your brain. I'm learning so much about your brain. Yeah. Your spicy brain. And I've always been fascinated by it, but I don't think I've always been curious in in the way I've been more recently. And I think you're being more curious too. And so you're trying things out. Yeah. And I love seeing that, that that's, you know, really uh, in my mind, it's actually changing your daily day to day. Yeah. Because you're, you're not, you know, you still have those moments where you're down or you're, you're hard on yourself, but I'm, I'm hearing more and more how accepting really you are. I think a lot of people in your life accept you to an extent, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's Megan. That's how yeah. she is. But I feel like it's, it's acceptance and like tolerance. Maybe it's tolerance versus acceptance, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, that's, that's how it is, whatever. But as I've been educated now, it feels more like acceptance. It's like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Right. Of course that's going to be this way because this is something that she deals with. Yeah. And I feel like you're being more accepting or like starting to get over that bridge from tolerance to acceptance as well. Yeah. Going from like, I'm being held hostage yeah. Right. That's a tolerance thing probably Yeah, to an ex to a balance of like, this is my awesome brain. And like, we're going to balance this out and we're going to figure it out. And yeah. We just have to keep being curious to do that. Yeah. Well, if you are curious like us and you have things that you want to contribute, we definitely have a page on Facebook that we want to really start to cultivate these conversations more. Yep. We've got friends who we know are listening. We appreciate you guys so much, our OGs. Yeah. Been with us from the beginning. We appreciate you guys so much. And I just love spending time with you, Megan. I love spending time with you. Thanks love for you. doing this. I love you too. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. That wraps up another episode of our Spicy Brain Podcast. This series has us focusing more specifically on ADHD and the symptoms list we got from the book, Driven to Distraction. If you enjoyed the episode as much as my sister enjoyed being able to say, I told you so, please share it with someone you think would benefit from the conversation. Make sure to follow us on whatever platform you're currently listening to so that you can get notified each week. Now, next week, I have no idea what we'll be talking about. We didn't have enough time to record this section, and in true ADHD fashion, I have waited to the last minute to record this. Michelle has most likely been asleep for hours while the hamster in my brain has been spinning like crazy. I guess we'll all have to tune in next week to figure out what the topic will be. <laughs> but until then, here's to a great end of the week, and remember, stay curious. You ready to bring it on? Yes, the dopamine is real. Oh. Wow! <laughs> That definitely has to be a short. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so hello, Megan. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to Spicy Brain Podcast. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, I, I, think just, I think you say it's welcome to the, the Spicy Brain Podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I, can, I like completely lost my train of thought. Where I was like, what am I doing again? Like, What's okay. the name of our podcast? I and can't remember it. So I'm like, welcome to Sin. No. <laughs> Not Sister Sister. Not okay. Sister Sisters anymore. It's <laughs> Spicy Brain. <laughs> the Spicy Brain Look, Podcast. I just totally ADHD'd you with my... Yeah. With yeah. my 2001 Space with Odyssey. The, dope you boom, did. Boom, completely. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>